On my channel, we generally go after fake gurus in the make money online space, targeting basically all of the get rich quick scammers. Fake guru is a term that can be applied to many different industries though. Today, we may have found one presenting himself as a monk. So in games, right? <clears throat> How many times have you failed in games? How many times have you died and then came back? You couldn't pass the level because it was too difficult. You got pop, pop, pop right behind you, somebody beside you. This TikTok monk is named Venerable Tree Dow and peruses through Walmart in what appears to be traditional monk clothing. I absolutely love this. The confidence you need to have in order to go in public wearing this and doing TikToks about playing video games is certainly commendable. Got pop, pop, pop. At least this monk has a better understanding of what a gun sounds like than Takashi 6 9 so I only attack the people that's coming for me. I said, yo, I fired security eight months ago. If I walk out of here and come from behind me, out the staircase, hang, 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 hang. it was already supposed to happen. This is my current favorite clip on YouTube right now. Who would have thought we'd be talking about a Buddhist monk and Takashi69 in the same video? They do have one thing in common, a little run in with the law. Back in December 2006, when our future monk of TikTok was 18, he was arrested for falsely personating an officer of the law, unlawful transport radio with Leo frequencies, and carrying concealed weapon. I am certainly not someone who shames people from something they did 15 years ago, as people can grow, change their behaviors, and become a better version of themselves. But what if that behavior hasn't changed? Eight months later, he was arrested for falsely personating an officer and unlawful trans on police fire radio. It appears that there might be a pattern of behavior here. Did this happen again? Just four months later, he was arrested again for personating an officer of the law in violation of injunction for protection. I've never seen someone so happy to be arrested. If girls on Tinder where he lives love bad boys, these would be pretty ideal pictures for his profile. We have three arrests within a short time frame for the same violation. It was 14 years ago, so we should hold our judgment as he was a young adult. Maybe he's changed and found enlightenment. Just a couple months later, he was arrested for trespassing on school property with other weapon, violation of injunction for protection against repeat something and falsely personating officer of the law. What's really scary is he was doing this routinely and it's clear he needed help, but that other charge of trespassing on school property with a weapon should be alarming. This next video might not surprise you then. A huge stash of real and fake guns, tasers, police radios, and uniforms. St. Petersburg police tell us this man tried to pull himself off as a security guard and he had an arsenal to back it up. Problem is cops say he's a phone a fake and they say he's done this before. This news video was taken from March 8, 2017, more than nine years after the monk's previous arrest. He clearly enjoys impersonating security guards or officers of the law. So these robes, right? So I grew up as a very angry young man. And ever since ordaining now going on six years, when I first put these robes on, it actually changed me. The amount of police gear confiscated from Harry Hong is staggering. Bags and bags of items, including weapons, both real and fake, ammo, canine vests, official looking badges, and cop equipment, radios, lapel pins, including some that say chief. I had one detective tell me that he probably had more police equipment in his mobile home than our entire detective squad. For all of my friends watching this video from outside the United States, welcome to America, where someone with with mental health issues and a clear history of impersonating officers of the law can collect weapons the size of an entire police unit. Hmm, I wonder what could go wrong. But he returned a few minutes later. So what's going on? Um, a person's allowed to collect those things and many people out there are allowed to collect those things. I'm limited into what I can say to you. But what about all the cop related items found in his parents house? That's Did you ever pass yourself off as a cop or as a security guard? I can't answer that. And, His attorney uh, question, did answer you know, that. I understand that some people enjoy guns and collect them just like someone might collect baseball cards, but I think we can all agree that some people might not be the most fit for collecting an entire house worth of dangerous weapons. The dude impersonates police officers and has weapons. How is the problem still persisting? I think that Harry has some severe mental issues and that's been diagnosed as delusional. It's probably a pretty serious issue if your lawyer is saying publicly that you're absolutely guilty of the charges and they were committed because of mental health concerns. Maybe this is common, but I've never seen a lawyer so blunt to the news outlets. Roger Futerman tells me Harry showed up at a psychologist dressed as a monk and once a doctor. Three doctors have examined him 
and the conclusion is he's been found incompetent to proceed and he's in the process of getting restoration training. This is a good reminder of how poorly we treat mental health concerns in America. I personally don't know what the solution is, but having someone with access to weapons and a clear history of impersonating police officers is kind of frightening, don't you think? Hong has numerous arrests on his record. So we have reason to believe he may have been trying to pass himself off as a law enforcement officer. If he's going to impersonate someone, I would much rather him impersonate a monk and walk around Walmart reviewing random Halloween items then impersonate a security officer carrying dangerous weapons. Harry seemed to slip into his cop mode. And I want everyone to know is that Pinellas County is safe. Residents here are safe. Uh, it, people know that. People who've worked with me before. There's nothing to worry about. This guy could probably make an awesome actor. He can slip into character immediately. Maybe I'll start writing a script for my first movie. Point break, but monks instead of surfers. As Hong's attorney says, his client needs help and he's off his meds. He was found incompetent on a previous lewd and lascivious charge. So I'm hoping this newfound interest in being a monk will force him to sell his weapons and security guard equipment. I'm not sure what a Buddhist theory on taking your medication is, but I hope it's one of the principles they abide by. Venerable, when I see my friends meditate, or people who have been meditating. He adds venerable to the beginning of his social media name, which means accorded a great deal of respect, especially because of age, wisdom, or character. This is the St. Petersburg Police Department's Facebook page. St. Petersburg Police received a tip that Hi, Harry Hong, age 28, was illegally posing as a security guard. After a two-month investigation, police arrested Hong and charged him with false personation of a watchman, felony, carrying a weapon while committing a felony, and carrying a firearm while committing a felony. Hong has none of the necessary licenses required to work as a security guard. These kinds of stories, unfortunately, are usually the precursor to something much worse. It's kind of scary that this type of behavior can continue given that he has access to all of these weapons. This kid has idolized law enforcement officers since elementary school. I used to work with his dad 20 years ago in Asian's Face Center. He always wore a badge and toy guns when he came to see his dad at the center. This is not new. I don't know if arresting and putting him in jail will make any difference this kid needs help. I remember when we were in high school and he pulled someone overnight pretending to be an unmarked police vehicle and then an actual squad car pulls up on him and he gets cuffed. What a relief that would be if you got caught speeding 20 miles over the limit only to find out that the police officer that pulled you over was just someone impersonating a police officer. This actually reminds me of No Country for Old Men where Ant and Chigger pulls people over to have a coin flipping contest. This website, A View on Buddhism, has a list for controversial Buddhist teachers and groups. Near the bottom you'll find today's subject. Claims to be ordained at Chuaf Bat Bop, Southwest Florida Buddhist Inc., but the abbot says he was not ordained there. Thankfully, Harry's TikTok is him sharing positive messages and nothing harmful. To my knowledge, he's not selling anything or charges $1,000 for a course on how to meditate. Being a fake guru in this case isn't harmful to anyone, but I do hope that this new monk life has removed him from his weapons. Speaking of fake gurus, I came across this page for Dari Rulai Temple. This monk was listed as one of the offenders on the list I just showed you. Have your photo placed on the Medicine Buddha altar to pray for health, longevity, and to extinguish disaster. Have your photo placed on the Wealth altar to pray for prosperity and good luck. He also says you'll get a guru blessing. Is there anything more fake guru than saying you'll be blessed with health, prosperity, and good luck by paying for a picture to be blessed by a guru? I also stumbled on this funny article, Fake Buddhist Monks, A Growing Global Problem. Buddhist leaders in New York City and around the world are warning the public to be cautious of the panhandling trend that takes advantage of the public's image of Buddhist monks as harmless. This article explains how fake monks approach pedestrians and ask them to sign a petition for peace before offering a medallion or bracelet and pushing for donations that will supposedly be donated to a temple in Thailand. This post links to a New York Post article titled Fake Buddhist Monks are the New Squeegee Men of New York. Fake monks hassle tourists on the High Line. There's something about this photo that is just too funny. Bands of beggars dressed like Buddhist monks have invaded the High Line and other city parks, demanding upwards of $40 from tourists, and officials are fed up. One High Line visitor handed over $5 last week, but it wasn't good enough. He tried to get $20, she told the Post. This is so funny to me. Something about people dressing up as monks demanding money from tourists who are only giving money away because they think they can pay for good favors or prosperity. In a way, they're both scamming each other. The behavior of the phony Himalayan holy men has been anything but heavenly in Bryant Park. One was spotted last week swiping a plastic water bottle from a clueless sidewalk vendor. Other faux friars were spotted on smoking bricks trying to hide the unchast behavior near a subway entrance. I would legit fall over laughing if I saw a couple of monks on a smoking break in a New York City park. There's a simple way to spot a fake monk. A real monk will never aggressively beg for money. How to spot a fake monk and a fake guru. If they're aggressively begging you for money, they are a fraud. Thanks for watching.